I must get this done quickly. The mangle which squeezed the clothes dry had considerable disadvantages. Uh, oh. Oh, this new machine looks a lot better. The collapsible rubber drum was even less successful. Let's see. Oh no, it's still wet. Oh. The principle of the spin dryer is that water is forced outwards, just like you're forced outwards on the fairground ride, the rotor. Well, in this model here, we've taken the outer casing of a spin dryer, so you can see what's, what actually goes on. In this sort, the water comes out of these slits in the middle. Well, if I uh, get out of the way, I'll switch it on. This is actually part of a separate spin dryer, but the automatic uses the same principle. The water is flung into an outer drum. From there, it's then pumped out the bottom. The pump usually has a separate small motor beneath the drum, which is connected up here. Inside the pump, the water comes in through the middle and the impeller whizzes round and round and forces the water out, up, outwards, up through the waste hose. The ingenious thing about these pumps is that they resist blocking themselves up with fluff and other small objects. It does this because the impeller is, is much smaller than the space around it. I think you, we can show you uh, how it helps, how it tries not to block itself up with this model. If you start the pump going and tip some buttons into the drum, they all go straight through the pump. The central part of any automatic is the programmer timer, which switches everything on and off at the right moment. These devices had an unlikely origin. The first automatic was made by an American company called Seaberg, who mostly made jukeboxes. In some respects, the automatic washing machine does have more in common with a jukebox than with a primitive electric washer. Both the automatic and the jukebox have timers switching a sequence of operations. Seaberg's washing machine was a failure, but it carried on making programmer timers for other companies. The modern washing machine timer is totally enclosed. It's a lot easier to see how it works with a, an industrial equivalent where everything is much more spaced out. This is a small switch called a micro switch and there are a whole row of them along the back here. And at the end here there's a geared motor. As the motor rotates it turns this drum round with these cams on and these switch the micro switches on and off. Each switch is connected to a different function of the machine. Of course, on a washing machine, it goes around much slower. One revolution for the complete wash cycle. I quite often use these timers because a lot of the machines I make have a sequence of actions. This one's called the chiropodist. She looks down at your foot for a bit and then looks up and twiddles her thumbs. Then she disappears beneath her counter and tickles your foot. <laughs> In the past few years, microprocessors have started to replace electromechanical timers. It hasn't been easy to make a microprocessor work reliably inside the hot and steamy environment of a washing machine, and it's only quite recently, after years of development, that they've become a practical alternative. The principle of the modern automatic has changed very little in the last 25 years, except the main difference is the price, which, adjusted for inflation, is less than half what it was. Yeah, what seems to be the trouble, sir? The has got dirty washing yeah. everywhere on. But to make this reduction in price possible, the machines have changed a lot inside, and they're no longer built to last forever. 
The modern engineering would probably horrify pre-war engineers who worship polity, not economy. Ooh, look at that engineering. Oh, my God. Oh! Oh, dear. Oh, oh dear. Uh, oh, dear. Uh, oh. Oh. Most of these changes have gone unnoticed. The old automatics, like the Climatic, had complete separate chassis inside. In the modern machines, all the bits are just bolted to the outer casing. The old machines had cast iron weights, whereas the modern machines had their lumps of concrete. In the old machines, the heater wires were about twice as thick as they are now. And the pulleys, which used to be solid lumps of cast iron, are now often just really tin cans full of concrete. It's tempting to think that washing machines don't last so long as they used to, simply because they're less well made. There's some truth in this, but it's also a result of the manufacturer's great success at cutting their costs. It's now much often cheaper to buy a whole new machine than it is to pay for even a simple repair. <clears throat> All the machines you've seen in this programme were scrap. They cost us about two pounds each, and they came from household waste tips. I hate today's disposable way of making things in all sorts of ways, but I can't help admire the ingenuity of the modern washing machine. I hope I've managed to convey some of my enthusiasm for these ingenious contraptions.